The massive space station hung silently in orbit above the planet, its polished metal hull glinting in the light of the distant sun. This was the headquarters of the Galactic Council, an august body composed of representatives from civilizations across the Milky Way. Today, the council chambers buzzed with activity. The delegates took their seats around the towering amphitheater, their voices echoing off the vaulted ceiling. This session promised to be contentious. The council planned to vote on whether to admit Earth into their alliance. The Centaurians, an ancient race of scholars, were staunchly opposed. We cannot allow those violent apes into our midst, their leader snorted, his nostrils flaring. The amphibious Rigelians croaked their agreement, but the wispy Scythians argued for inclusion. Perhaps they will mature in time, their ambassador said hopefully. A hush fell over the chamber as the human ship arrived. It was a tiny, battered craft, held together by rust and hope and trailing sparks. The paint on its side proudly proclaimed Party Barge Alpha. Murmurs of shock rippled through the council at this disreputable entrance. What were the humans thinking? The ship docked with a heavy clank. After a long pause, the airlock cracked open. Thumping bass and raucous laughter spilled out. The humans tumbled into the hall. Six men and women dressed in flower-patterned shirts, baggy shorts, and sandals. The Centaurian leader reared up in outrage. Where are your diplomatic robes? He thundered. The humans blinked. These are our fanciest clothes, brah, one said, adjusting his neon sunglasses. As the council filed into session, the humans looked around with interest, snapping pics with their phones. They ate messy snacks and cracked open beers, oblivious to the glares around them. The Rigelian ambassador reviewed the intricate council protocols first. The humans' eyes glazed over. When the voting began, they jumped up and cheered randomly for both sides. The Centaurian leader soon lost his temper. This is a grave matter, not a sporting event, he admonished them. The humans apologized sheepishly. But as the endless presentations dragged on, the humans fidgeted. Finally, one whispered, I'm bored, dudes. Let's liven this place up. To the council's horror, the human suddenly initiated a limbo contest right there in the hallowed chamber. Shouting and sliding under the pole, they clearly had no respect for decorum. And yet their carefree energy brought an undeniable surge of life to the stayed proceedings. Not everyone was displeased. Perhaps the humans did have something to offer the Galactic Council after all. After the disastrous first council meeting, the humans were scolded harshly for their complete lack of decorum. You must learn our ways if you wish to join us, the Centaurian leader lectured. Looking properly chastened, the humans tried their best to study the complex protocols and customs of the council races, but it was like trying to teach chimps table manners. The humans grew restless after just a few hours. Hey, we know, one said. Let's throw a party tonight to get to know you dudes better. Before the other races could object, the humans had dispatched handmade invitations decorated in crayon. The council members were unsure how to respond to such folly, but a few curious souls ventured to the humans' small ship that evening. They were met with blasting earth music and flashing party lights. The humans welcomed them jovially, pressing drinks into their hands. Some aliens recoiled, but others got into the spirit. The Scythians floated dreamily under the laser lights. A group of Rigelians formed a conga line, awkwardly shuffling behind the humans. Some of the humans attempted contact juggling, tossing glowing balls into the air. Others break danced wildly, spinning on their heads to the rhythm of the beat. The aliens had never witnessed such unrestrained dance and celebration. Next, the humans dragged their guests to a karaoke machine. Tone deaf but enthusiastic, the humans belted out their favorite hits. A few aliens risked the microphone, singing in timid, wavering voices. Yeah, sing it, the humans cheered. By the end of the night, 
symphonic Rigelian arias mixed with poppy human tunes in unlikely harmony. At the farewells, the aliens admitted they had enjoyed themselves, though the party was like nothing their races had experienced. That is the point, laughed the humans. Letting go feels good sometimes. The next day, the Centaurian leader scolded them again for wasting time. How will you learn anything about our culture this way? But the Scython ambassador replied, On the contrary, we learned much about humanity's energy. Perhaps we were too hasty in judging them. And so the humans remained undaunted in their quest to get the council races to loosen up. At every break in the tedious debates, they cajoled their new friends into sports, pranks, and wild games. The results were predictably chaotic, yet the aliens couldn't deny it was the most fun they'd had in centuries. The human spirit was nothing if not contagious. After weeks of raucous human antics, the final day of the Galactic Council meetings arrived. The humans had proven themselves utterly lacking in decorum and propriety, yet some of the aliens had also come to admire their passion, humor, and warmth. Today's closing ceremony would determine the Council's vote on Earth's membership. The humans were optimistic but subdued as they prepared to plead their case. They wanted to prove they could be serious when it mattered. The Council chamber filled with dignitaries in formal robes. The humans entered wearing their most fancy attire, thrift store suits and sundresses, hair combed flat, gangly bodies scrubbed pink and clean. The Centaurian leader frowned, but the wispy Scython smiled at the human's effort. The humans took their seats and waited dutifully as endless speeches droned on. Finally, the human ambassador stepped forward for his petition. Friends, he began earnestly, we know we have much to learn, but with your guidance we believe Earth can contribute something valuable to the Council. Eyes shone with emotion as he spoke of humanity's indomitable spirit, their love of life and laughter even during dark times. The ambassador described music that crossed cultures and dances that unified young and old. Life is more than rules and order, he finished. It is also joy, creativity, silliness. We have seen how our different cultures can enrich each other. Let us move forward together in this spirit, as allies. A thoughtful silence followed the stirring speech. Then the Scython delegate floated up gracefully. The humans have shown us it is possible to embrace both wisdom and wonder, she said. They have my vote. One by one, other ambassadors stood in agreement. The consensus was clear. Earth would join the Council. A wave of cheers and shouts erupted from the human section. They couldn't restrain their glee despite the solemn setting. At the celebratory banquet that night, the humans were in rare form. They draped multicolored garlands over the distinguished guests. Earth music filled the hall and lively dancing broke out. There were toasts, embraces, and even tears between humans and aliens as new bonds were forged. Laughter echoed everywhere as Zeno and mankind celebrated their future together. It was the most raucous and joyful banquet in Council history. As the last guest departed in the early hours, a new era dawned in the galaxy. Though differences remained between the peoples of the Council, they now knew they could coexist in harmony and enjoy the fruits of friendship. Humanity had arrived, and the cosmos would never be the same. Suddenly, one human whispered to an alien, Dude, where's my spaceship?